to Peace United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I do have two announcements. The first is if you have concern over all the fires that are going on on the west coast or the flooding in the south, one of the ways that we can help is through the Disasters Ministry. So if you would like to give a special gift and just send in a check to Peace Church and put in the memo, Disaster Ministries, we will make sure it gets to the right place. The other thing is I would like to invite you to our coffee hour at 10 o'clock by Zoom. You can find the Zoom address on our bulletin. So I hope you will come and join us so that we can see each other, at least by that means, and have conversation. And now let us be in worship. forgiveness and tenderness are poured out for us. Praise be to God who deals so kindly with us. Help us, O oh God, to offer the same compassion to others. Please join me in the opening hymn, Sing Praise to God Who Has Shaped. Thank you. 
prayer. As we sing our praise to you, O God, we remember the multitude of blessings you have given us. We are mindful of the ways in which you have lifted us when we have fallen low. Yet we are also prone to grumble and complain once again when times are tough. Pour your grace upon us and help us to listen closely for your word to us, that it may feed our spirits. Remind us that you are always with us, providing for us and sustaining us throughout all of our lives. In Christ's name, the living bread, we pray. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 through 30. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining and as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there was a, on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, 
as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs and over to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some gathering less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who had gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. And Moses said to them, let no one leave any of it over until morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it until morning and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning, they gathered it as much as each needed. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much food, two omers apiece. When the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, this is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. And all that is left over, put aside to be kept until morning. So they put it aside until morning as Moses commanded them. And it did not become foul and there were no worms in it. Moses said, eat it today for today is the Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather and they found none. The Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you food for two days. Each of you stay where you are. Do not leave your place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Children, today I want to talk to you about the word grace. Maybe you say grace before your meals. At least I sure hope you do. If not, you might talk to your parents about it. Growing up for me, the grace that we always said is God is great, God is good. Let us thank God for our food, amen. And you know that before Peace Power Night, when we've shared meals together, we always say a prayer and thank you to God for the food. Grace, though, is not something we give to God. What we are doing when we say grace is that we are giving our thanksgivings for God's grace. And we can do that before meals, but we can also do that when we wake up in the morning and we see the sun and a beautiful day to simply say, thank you, God. Or at night to say, thank you, God. And stop and think before you go to sleep about all the wonderful things God has done for us that day, whether it's the food or whether it's friendships that we had or something we learned new at school or some kindness that our parents gave us. So I invite you to think about the word grace and all the ways God has given you abundant blessings, lots of grace. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you that we can continue to worship even when we can't come together. We thank you for all who helped to make this possible and all the technology and all the extra people that are stepping up to help us to be able to worship. We thank you for our children and for the joy they bring into our lives. We thank you for the beautiful creation you have given us as well as the food we eat. For everything that you have blessed us with, we say thank you. Amen.
My friends, we are living through our own wilderness time. And it's part of the lifelong journey we are living in a way that we never, ever expected to have to live. Whether it is fortuitous or if it's providential, that the Exodus story is in the three-year lectionary reading right now at this time in our lives. I do believe it is a moment of grace for us. It's an opportunity to hear the story again of others going through their own time of wilderness and to glean what we can from their experience for our lives. We remember that last week's story of the miraculous crossing through the Red Sea. The people first charged Moses with bringing them out of Egypt to die. And the story ended with them singing and dancing for joy, for their freedom after crossing through the waters. Now what is one month later? The Israelites are complaining once again to Moses. Some translations said, say they are grumbling or murmuring. The words, however, are filled with inner fear and outward anger. We too certainly hear all around us a good deal of complaining and grumbling these days, don't we? I confess I have certainly had my days of griping and grieving. The Israelites accuse Moses, if only God would have let us die in Egypt with our bellies full. Instead, you brought us out here into the wilderness to die of starvation. They remember the food that they had in Egypt, but forgot how they had cried out to God for relief from the oppression of Pharaoh, a ruler who cared nothing for their welfare. How quick, too, that they forgot their singing and their dancing for freedom. It reminds me of the lyrics of the Broadway production Hamilton, which King George III sings right after America wins the Revolutionary War. These short lyrics from the song go, What comes next? You've been freed. Do you know how hard it is to lead? You're on your own. Awesome. Wow. Do you have a clue what happens now? We, too, longingly look back. We remember how we were all together in worship. And we cry out now for relief with all the uncertainty that lies before us. And in our yearning, we also realize that when we first can come back, it will not be the way it was before. There is no going back, only forward. And this is what the Israelites are beginning to learn. There is one major difference in the Hamilton lyrics for us. We are not on our own. God is with us. God responds to the people's complaints. I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. Each morning there are fresh provisions of grace. God provides for theirs and our daily needs. No more and no less. Give us this day our daily bread. And God provides at the very moment that we really need it, no sooner and no later. For God is not about 
all the complaining. God doesn't care about that. God hears our anguish as God heard their anguish. God understands that rumbling tummies are going to cause grumbling outcries. God continues to say, I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. God is seeking to mold the people into a covenantal relational community with one another and with God. Will they treat each other with equity and justice? Will they do as God tells them to do in order to create a beloved community, living in peace and in harmony with one another? And will they love God as God loves them? According to God's instructions, the people went out early in the morning before the sun rose and the dew dried on the ground to collect the manna, which literally means, what is it? They were to collect only what they needed for that day according to the size of their family. On the sixth day before the Sabbath, they were to collect enough for two days so that they could rest on the Sabbath. It's a matter of trust. Do they trust that God will continually provide? Do they trust God's grace? Apparently, not all of them. Some took more than they were supposed to. And the next day, it turned foul and filled with worms. Some tried to go out on the Sabbath morning, but there was no manna to be found. This is what troubles God. Their greed, taking more than what was theirs to have. Their fear of scarcity instead of trusting in God's abundance. Their inability to simply rest working overtime to gain more for their daily needs, not trusting that what God has already provided is enough. Sabbath, Shabbat, rest. Their inability to do what God desires for the welfare of the whole of the community. They put their personal wants and desires ahead of the other people and before God. This was what concerned God. So how are we doing on our wilderness journey? Do we find ourselves wandering in what our statement of faith calls aimlessness and sin? Or do we trust God to lead and guide us step by step, day by day? Do we live with a fear of scarcity? Or are we trusting that God will provide for our daily needs? Are we honoring the Sabbath, worshiping no matter how different, and resting? These are weary days, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. I know for myself, there are some days that I feel absolutely overwhelmed by all that is happening. Other days, I grieve at the hatred and the animosity being spewed out into our world. And I call upon God to help us get through in peace. And there are times of restlessness and moments of loneliness and even occasional wishful thinking. 
And there are many days of deep pondering, trying to make meaning out of what is going on, searching for God's wisdom through it. Right now, we need more rest than usual and to stay connected with God all the more. When we communicate daily with God, God will provide for our deepest needs. We hear in Deuteronomy 8, Moses' instructions to the people right before they crossed into the promised land. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The Gospel of John, in one of the I am statements, quotes Jesus as saying, I am the bread of life. This follows right after Jesus has fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. The very next day, that very same crowd says to Jesus, show us what you can do. Moses fed our ancestors with bread in the desert. It says so in the scriptures, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So apparently the feeding of 5,000 with that little food that was sufficient enough for all was not sufficient enough to assure the people the next day. So perhaps too, we find ourselves needing daily reassurance from God. We know that Jesus is the bread of life, the living incarnate word of God. The word that he taught, the way of love that he lived, his crucified body and his resurrection offer to us all. Christ is the spiritual bread upon which we need to feed upon daily, his words, his teachings, his peace, his love for all of humanity. Jesus is the bread of life which frees our spirits, freeing us to trust God's abundant grace, to hope for our future even in a time of uncertainty to love our neighbor, and to provide for them as God provides for us. To know life is worth living now and embracing those really important things in life, a deeper relationship with God, experiencing God in our lives, knowing God's care, and closer connection with family and friends, even if we do need to social distance and wear masks. Being the church in new ways which are opening up before us. And learning to humbly trust God in the hard times as well as the good. For God's grace is enough, and there is more than enough grace for us all. Amen.
us be in prayer. Humble us, O God, that we may rejoice in your abundant grace. We are people who have had more than enough, more than our daily bread. And when we consider the deep poverty and the sickness around the world, we know that your blessings overflow into our lives. And yet within our own community, there are those who work hard simply for their daily bread. And still others hunger for any food they can find yearning also for safe housing and basic health care. Remove all fears of scarcity from our hearts and help us to spread your abundant grace and blessings to those in need. Oh, when we hear creation crying aloud to us with blazing wildfires, flooding hurricanes, both in numbers we've never seen before. I know that the Antarctica is melting under the hottest days on record. Give us ears to truly hear, and the wisdom and the will to act as caretakers of your creation. Be with all whose lives have been in the pathway of destruction, especially during a pandemic. In the West with orange skies, poor air quality, difficulty breathing, evacuations, homes and businesses lost, and firefighters risking their lives. And to the South, severe water damage. We offer our prayers for your people and all of your creation in harm's way. And as we are able, our resources too. And for all who are suffering from COVID, we pray for the loss of loved ones, to those in ICUs and hospital rooms, others trying to recover at home, and the long haulers who are anything yet but recovered, and for those who are worried about their family members. May your healing light fall upon them all. And we pray for those we know in need of your continual care. Hear our prayers for Paula, and Sandy, and Clayton, and Willie, and Deborah, that they may receive your healing, wholeness, and peace. From the prayer box, we received a prayer from whose name you know. So we lift it to you. Let my mission in this world be only for peace. Hear now the silent prayers upon our hearts. Christ Jesus, bread of life, teach us to live your way of love as we pray together your prayer. Our who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
I want to share with you a message that we received. The AA group that meets here on Wednesday nights has been meeting outside, but it has grown too dark. So they asked us, and the council approved, that they could meet in the fellowship hall that began this week. The consideration was for the mental and physical health of our neighbors. This is the letter the leader shared with us. I want to thank you for your decision to allow us to use the fellowship hall for our Wednesday night meeting. Every person wore a mask without question, and we sat two at a table, then used the chairs. Every person used a disinfectant wipe and wiped off their chair and the table where they were sitting after the meeting. I cannot explain what it meant to some members that came last night. Some were brought to tears as it was their first AA meeting since March. Some couldn't hang on without the meetings and were back from a relapse last night. It provided us with what keeps us sober, fellowship and meetings. Your generosity may seriously have saved a life. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. These are our neighbors, and there are many more neighbors in need also. Good morning. As we just heard Pastor Gloria read the letter from our local AA group, Peace United Church of Christ is working to help neighbors in need. Last, last week, we shared with you the new 2020 video for the United Church of Christ Neighbors in Need special offering. Every year at this time, we participate in this mission. However, Times are different this year. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, the national office and elected officials of the United Church of Christ determined it was necessary to gather funds from a variety of sources which included neighbors in need to form a COVID-19 relief fund. This fund will put high priority on offering relief where it is mostly needed in these difficult times. The fund will still continue to support ministries of justice and compassion throughout the United States. In the coming weeks, you will hear more about these ministries and members of Peace United Church of Christ will be will be receiving offering envelopes with their voices newsletter. Donations can also be done online at the email address below. Just click on donate. We will be doing our final offering on October 4th as part of the World Communion Sunday. Thank you for your past donations, and please consider a donation this year. Abundantly we have received, so abundantly may we give our gifts to God.
join me in the offertory prayer. Generous God, you have blessed us with so much. Bless also these gifts and our lives that they may feed the hungry in body and in spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. take time to thank God for the grace that God has given us. And now may the hope and the peace and the joy and the love of Christ be with us all. Amen. Amen.